your lawn how to stretch properly so as not to hurt yourself. <laughs> um, so the objectives I have for the lecture are to list the top seven most commonly injured muscles in runners, according to Runner's World, discuss the benefits of stretching before versus after uh, exercise, and to explain why bouncing a stretch is bad for muscles. So just to start off with some basic benefits of stretching, when I was looking up this information, each thing that I looked up was contradictory to the, the thing I read before, and sometimes they even conflict themselves when they talk in these articles, but the basic gist that I got was that stretching increases balance and flexibility as well as range of motion, and this all improves athletic performance as well as decreasing the potential for injury. So that increased range of motion that I was talking about decreases the possibility for overload of your muscles and microtrauma, which leads to injury, as well as increasing blood flow to muscles, which helps with the athletic performance of these <clears throat> In terms of my stretch, like I said, no one can agree. But the one thing they did all generally say was that you should not stretch cold muscles. Your, <clears throat> your muscles should be warm in some form, whether that's after a brief five to 10 minute walk or jog, or after doing the exercise itself. But in general, the takeaway here is that dynamic stretching, which I'll talk about in a second, um, after your muscles have been warmed up, increases your athletic performance the best and decreases injury the most. So like I said, here's dynamics versus static stretching. Dynamic stretching mimics the movements that you would see in an exercise. So for example, if I were going for a run, dynamic stretching would be doing arm circles or high knees, something that's going to look like an easier version of the exercise. So it gets your body ready for that exercise. Whereas static stretching is more of what you think of when a stereotypical stretch. So standing there and stretching your quads or bending over and touching your toes, and it's moving a muscle to a point of tension and holding it there. It's very good for target soreness that you feel after an exercise. So if you were to go on the elliptical for a half an hour and you find that your calves are really sore after, static stretching is really good to relieve that soreness. So in general, dynamic stretching before you work out, but still after you warm up, is good to get your body ready for exercise. And then static stretching is helpful after the exercise to sort of cool down and let your body heal from the exercise. Any questions on that? So the Big 7 is a term coined by Runner's World, which is an online running blog. And it refers to the top seven most common running injuries. So they're listed here for you. I mean, they're not in your own area. Um, so they're runner's knee, um, Achilles tendonitis, which the Achilles tendon is the one behind your heel, um, hamstring issues, which can range from minor pain to inflammation to tears and ribs, plantar fasciitis, which is in the foot, Shin splints, which I always thought I had shin splints very frequently until I actually had shin splints. They're very painful <laughs> and definitely want to be avoided. But also, if you do get them, you definitely want to be able to treat them. IT band syndrome. Your IT band is a ligament that connects to your hip to your knee, basically, and helps with flexion and extension of your leg. And it, there's a very high potential for injury there because, again, like hamstrings, they can be irritated, inflamed, torn. Um, and then stress fractures, which I did want to point out, are different than regular fractures. So it's, if you have a normal break, you have a point of impact and your bone breaks or crack, cracks or shatters or whatever the case may be. For the stress fracture, it is an accumulated pressure on a certain area of the body after a certain amount of use. So for example, if you start running, you're increasing the amount of pressure that that foot feels. And so you, can, you have the possibility to create small cracks in the bone which develop a stress fracture. So different than a regular fracture. So don't have those. So some ways to combat these injuries. I would definitely recommend seeing a doctor first because they're going to be able to tell you whether it's something not so severe and that you can run through or if it's more serious and it's something that you should take a break from exercising for to let heal. You want to increase your mileage slowly if you're starting to run. So what I found was a 10% rule. If you're running to increase your mileage, say for a race, you want to make sure that you're not increasing your mileage every week by more than 10%. So say, for example, if I were to run 10 miles total this week, I would want to run more than 11 miles next week. Um, because it gives your body a chance to adapt to the stresses and the pressures that you're putting on it, and again, decrease that chance of injury. Can you see test tape and compression socks? are along the same lines here, so they follow the idea of compression and sort of keeping things in line where they should be to decrease injury. Kinesio test tape is good for shin 
splints, either before or after you get them. Um, and compression socks obviously focus on the foot and leg. And like I said, they just keep bones, ligaments, muscles, everything in line to decrease irritation and inflammation. And then foam rolling is based on this theory of self-myofascial release. Um, myofascial release is basically just a deep tissue stretching therapy that releases pressure, basically. So, and then the self is obviously that you're doing it on your own with a foam roller. I'm sure you've probably all seen them there this, about this long in a compressed foam. And so it has a whole range of benefits. Some of them include uh, increasing range of motion of the muscles, decreasing soreness and target point pain, and improving muscle balance. And it can be used on many areas of the body. And some common mistakes that I just wanted to talk about in terms of stretching. So bouncing a stretch. I always thought and I was always taught that if you shot down into a stretch and it came up and then shot down into a stretch again, it, you would be going further into the stretch each time and you would be in theory stretching better. That's actually not true. It's really bad for your muscles. Um, so when you do a bouncing stretch like that, it causes a faster muscle contraction than a slower stretch would. And it actually decreases the amount that that muscle can lengthen and decreases the the ability you have to stretch. And since it's a fast jerking motion, you have a higher risk of injuring yourself and it's more painful. You don't want to make stretching your only warm up. It's not an adequate cardiovascular uh, warm up, basically. So you want to make sure that your body is prepared in all aspects to exercise, not just stretching. If you're going to stretch one side, you want to stretch the other because obviously you want to make sure that your injury risk is equal on both sides. <laughs> You, um, you don't want to expect pain when you stretch. This is something else that I didn't know until I did this project, so I always thought that if it was painful, it was a better stretch. But you should expect tension when you stretch, not pain. If it's painful, it's either too far or too much or something along those lines. So you want to, again, expect tension but not pain. And you don't want to stretch a muscle that's already strained. If you have an injury of any sort, you want to give it a chance to rest and heal before you shoot back into exercise again. Thanks, Thank you.